Welcome back to the Value Investors Club readings. Um, this is not recommendation only for educational purposes. Um, all credit goes to the VIC. We have the first recommendation, Doximity Docs. It was filed um, in on September 4th, 2022. And let's go right into the description. Um, company background. Doximity is a platform service offering LinkedIn for doctors and telehealth tools to physicians. 80% of U.S. physicians are on this doctors-only network, as are 90% of medical students. There's a version targeting nurses as well, with 50% with of all nurses on board. Using, using this captive audience, it sells marketing services to pharmaceutical companies as well as hospital system. It also requires hospital staffing company before, before IPO that now leverages this channel. It is growing revenues in the mid-20s organically with low 30s operating margins. The thesis in three bullets. Excellent monopoly business with pricing power at a fair valuation after resetting of expectations. Bulletproofs financial profile with no leverage and 12% of market cap in cash. Several capital deployments, upside opportunities not visible today and therefore not in valuation. The opportunity and why it exists. Earlier this year, Pop4 Press put out an excellent short report outlining how the windfalls of COVID have accelerated Doc's business in a way that the market was underestimating. Given the short, less than one year, contract cycle, Docs runs on management lack the, management lack the, vis uh, the level of visibility needed to guide around this as well. With success earlier in this year, the company raised guidance twice on big beats that partially relied on repeating upsell success. In its most recent release, management was forced to bring guidance down, lowering the upsell assumption and revenue. Shares crashed. And the stock now sits at $33, roughly where Pop4 Press valued the business via DCF. Versus an ATH of less than 100, or more than 100, I'm sorry. Um, the narrative has quickly shifted to pessimism, both on the macro and the TAM of the company. I believe this has created an opportunity to own a well-capitalized monopoly within its niche with large end market growth and pricing power at a fair price in exchange for several upside call options. If multiple compression from around 50, uh, 45 NTM price to earnings continues to offset growth, I'd expect Docs to become an obvious takeout candidate for either a clinical CRO like IQV or CLL slash CLR or VEV, v -E -E -V. given the many obvious synergies between businesses. Macro. While it is true that many large pharma companies are optimizing for EPS right now, digital is clearly going to remain part of the marketing toolkit for the customers uh, Doximity has managed to bring on board to date. One customer, as highlighted in its 4Q call, even adopted a digital first approach centered on Doximity's offering. The digitization of former marketing is a secular trend, both in enabling reps and replacing them. And Docs is front and center here. TAM, M3 Analog. Many have suggested that TAM saturation may be taking place and that the market for Docs services is much smaller than the number thrown out by the management. My main disagreement with this notion comes from important analog. There's a Japanese company that has a similar business model a gamified news website that uses a point system to keep users engaged on the platform with a former ad business, more revenue, sustained DD growth in a much smaller geography. At the end of uh, its fiscal year 2020, 2022, March, uh, M3 did 1.5 billion in revenue, growing 23% year over year and 29% the year prior. About half of this revenue was from pharma marketing and staffing solutions. M3 also has clinical trial solutions and adjacency um, that I expect docs to move into someday, but to uh, but do not bake into my valuation. I will revisit this as it is a major source of capital deployment opportunity or a reason for docs to be a takeout candidate. 
Below are some U.S. Japan farmer market comparisons according to Nations Master. Farmer spending per capita in Japan is $932. In the U.S., it is $1,298. I'm sorry. The relative size, uh, therefore, is 1.4x. The population in Japan is in million, uh, 126, and in the U.S., 330. Relative um, size, therefore, 2.6x. Uh, implied drug spend in billions is 117 in Japan and 425 in the US. Relative size, 3.6x. These, number, uh, these numbers imply nearly a 4x SAM for a business that is doing 1.5x in revenue versus stocks today. Japan is arguably less competitive as a market, meaning the US could be bigger. And the 7 to 8 billion thrown up by management seems to back that claim. Back of the envelope, math shows that DOCS is only 20% of the way to replicating. M3 fiscal year 2020 to, uh, 2022, farmer plus staffing revenue in, um, in uh, dollars, um, $610. Uh, million do, uh, a million do, uh, US dollars, I'm sorry. Uh, M3 platform percent, uh, percentage of farmer spend is 0.52%. Um, equivalent in the U.S. is $2,213. Doc's fiscal year 2023 guide at MP is um, 428 and applied penetration 19%. The unbaked upsides. With the past two sustainable mid-20s plus growth on market opportunity alone, I see Doc's as fairly valued on conservative estimates. My DCF supports um, around $35 to $45 per share. Um, as a share price, I'm sorry, depending on what your discount rate rate is these days. To me, this uh, makes docs extremely attractive to own because the market has yet to focus on the upsides, given the weird comp environment we are in coming out of COVID and into a tough macro for former customers. Margin potential. M3's medical segment has an operating profit margin of 45% and doesn't add back SBC the way DOCS does for its EBITDA numbers. DOCS run rates that add back at around 10% of sales, meaning the comparable EBITDA margin is somewhere around 32 if you use DOCS guidance. This is an investment year for DOCS, but it's easy to see how you get to the uh, how you get to M3's level or higher with operating leverage and pricing power alone. And DOCS should have a lower customer acquisition cost since it uses a social network that sells low cost product product instead of effective paying doctors to use its platform. M3 gives you a gift card for participating on their site consistently. The street has a history of um, outsourcing margin work to Docs management. If you look at what Docs said about margins at IPO and compared to the to the ten percent higher levels they say are possible today. Capital deployment potential. M3 also has two other segments that utilize its effective uh, its captive audience of physicians in Japan that Doximity does not today. These are clinical trial solutions where M3 helps with evidence, solutions, and clinical trial enrollment. These are huge markets in the US, and being a better enrollment solution has been a major source of share gains for clinical CROs that have gotten it right. Docs has the asset in place a place to win the space in place to win the space if it choose if it chose to start buying clinical or CROs which aren't particularly expensive assets it could do a, a simple roll up finance in a variety a variety of ways take our potential considering the fact that Jeff was willing to sell epocrates in the past i wouldn't be surprised if this was in the back of his mind's mind if docs doesn't do the above it's because the likely outcome is to sell to a company that wants the assets to do it in reverse. The likely buyer could afford to pay up for docs and it would margin accretive to almost any buyer. Any buyer. Know that these potentials are all hard to quantify, but accelerating growth puts a lot of upward pressures on multiples. Risks. U.S. farmer marketing's digital shift 
could stall if rep layoffs cause too many political issues. User engagement has been a hot button topic for investors. Since stocks hasn't been great at giving traditional user metrics expected of digital ad businesses. Similar web seems to suggest web plus app visits are growing and Jeff put out a report a month ago that also suggests that Doc's platform is becoming stickier from an engagement perspective. April 7.1 um, million engagements, uh, May 7.4 million engagement and June 7.8 million engagements. Conclusion. Now that dog growth, dog's growth, our um, estimates have normalized and sentiment is near and an all-time low for the company, I think the business is worth owning at this price because downside seems limited, especially if there is a world where margins keep expanding and growth accelerates like I think they could in fiscal year 2024. The upside potential is massive for dogs, given the strategic value of a captive doctor audience and it's utilized in both developing and commercializing pharmaceuticals. Thanks for reading. Welcoming any feedback or risk you all might think I'm missing from here th since I'm considering making this an even larger holding of mine than it already is. I'm comfortable with concentration when downsides are low enough. I do not hold a position with the issuers such as employment, directorship, or consultancy. I and or other uh, others I advise hold a material investment in the issuer's security. Catalyst earnings MA buybacks. Um, now the whole recommendation is from earnings season, earnings SZN on VIC. Go check them out. Go check out their website. Um, thank you very much for tuning in.